So welcome to my secret garden. Usually I get everything from thrift stores. Love the idea of using reclaimed materials and stuff like that. So here is this really cool fire pit that I built. Hi, my name is Jessica and welcome to my tiny house. I have been living here for approximately one month now here in beautiful sunny Florida. So come on in. So welcome to my kitchen. This here is a shelf that was in here when I already purchased the tiny house. Um, when I purchased the tiny house, it wasn't really a tiny house. It was more of a tool shed and it basically didn't have any um, anything else in here except for this and all the tools were on it. So what I did is I cut it down to size and I reconfigured it to fit in this space and turned it into my kitchen counter. And I put some stain on it and polyurethane and that was it. And then over here, I have my sink. And um, all I did for this was it was a old terracotta flower pot that I found at my mom's house. And I cut a hole in the top of this uh, countertop and caulked it and then stuck these uh, pebbles all the way around it and some of this reindeer moss in here to make it more a little earthy. And then this is my faucet. It's just one of those regular 12 volt rechargeable faucets. I have it, you just push this button here and then the water comes out from a freshwater tank that I have down below here. And it's a two and a half gallon freshwater tank. And when that's empty, I just go refill it back into town with the rest of my water jugs. Um, as far as where the water drains, the gray water, it empties just into this bucket. It's a temporary solution for me right now until I uh, finish the plumbing and it works fine when it gets filled. I just take it out and dump it outside. Over here, I just have this Coleman uh, one burner cooktop stove, and this is what I cook on. This is my little tea kettle for when I'm making my teas in the morning. This I got actually from Bell's Outlet. Usually I get everything from thrift stores. I'm a big thrift store person, but I went into Bell's Outlet and I got this, and this is acacia wood mirror, and I turned it into a really cool shelf, and I wanted, a mirror here to make the space feel more open. And then when you're standing here cooking, you can see outside. This is a mid-century hanging lamp. I can't remember if I got it at a yard sale or a thrift store, but I love mid-century stuff. I love bohemian stuff. Um, so yeah, it's not plugged in because I did put electrical in here, but I'm not very secure on my electrical work. So I haven't tried it yet. But what I did is I took a LED puck light and I took this globe off and I stuck it in there and then you just turn it on. I don't know if you can see that or not, but at night it shines and it's just like a regular light. So that's how I have that light. All right, so here I just have my plates and I have some really cool clay bowls that I found at a thrift store. I really love clay stuff, organic stuff. Um, these are just plastic ones, but I think these are organic in their own way as well. I forget what it is though. This cool, clay uh, plate that I found. Back here I just have some more bowls and here I have some snacks and canned goods. And in here I have my 12 volt bodega uh, fridge. It can be a fridge or a freezer uh, but it can't be both. Um, so I just always keep it on the fridge setting and you know it fits my needs perfectly. I don't have a lot of stuff in here right now because I usually go out to eat if I'm being honest. Um, but yeah, I just keep some of my snacks in here, my kombucha, um, fruits and stuff like that. Some of my vitamins that need to stay cold. And yeah, works great. So over here is just where I keep all my herb teas and stuff. Um, and then I have some moringa powder and some moringa seeds, which I'm starting to grow here as well. Um, the moringa I just put in my tea sometimes or my smoothies. So this is a piece of wood that came in here when I bought it and I cut it down, sanded it, and uh, put some polyurethane on it and stain and turned it into a little folding table where I can sit and eat. So this right here is a really amazing crocheted, handmade, um, bohemian, uh, what do you call it, dream catcher. My daughter found this for me at a thrift store and I just, I just absolutely love it. It's kind of like what inspired me to start doing everything 
um, in this type of decor from the beginning. So I have that hanging right there front and center. Here I just have a couple of more of my crystal necklaces hanging there. This is a cute little napkin holder I found at a garage sale. And um, this is a bar stool that I found at a thrift store and I just put a quick coat of white paint on it and that was that. I've been wanting to build a tiny house for a very, very long time, probably eight years now. And I first started, I was going to do a shed to tiny house conversion. Things happened in life that didn't work out. Um, so I originally wanted to build a tiny house on my property that didn't work out. And I ended up um, first building a tiny house on the water, a floating tiny house. And then that led me into this micro tiny house. Um, that way I could bring it around and travel with it and stuff like that. So the transition from going to a big two-story, 1800 square foot home to 70 square foot has been really easy, surprisingly. Um, you know, I always hated having so much room in a house that I never used, so coming here and doing this was very easy for me. Um, you know, there's only so much space you use in a house and that's basically your bed and maybe your couch, but I, I don't watch TV, every, TV very much, so I never really sat in the living room. So coming here, I just have everything I need, you know? Most of the stuff I do, I like doing stuff outside and um, I'm really never inside very often unless I'm sleeping or cooking something or going to the bathroom but other than that it's been it's been a really easy transition so over here we just have your basic composting toilet um, i have the separate urine diverter in the front and then in the back i just have a five gallon bucket with some uh, coconut core and some composting bags right here i just have a clay bowl with some coconut core in it. Over on this side, I have my mid-century wicker shelf where I keep all my girly stuff, my deodorants and perfumes, stuff like that, my washcloth and my towel and my body brush. I got my um, toothbrush and toothpaste and stuff like that back there. Over here, I have uh, Q-tips and I have a bunch more of my crystals. And down here and these two shelves is where I keep all my clothes at. Okay, on this side of the tiny house, we have my power station. Um, up here, this is the EcoFlow 288. And down here, I have the Jackery 240. This basically runs everything here in the tiny house. I have the fridge running completely off of the EcoFlow. And then I have um, my 12 volt fan for the composting toilet and um, this is where I charge like my phones and laptops and all that stuff there, um, iPads and whatnot. Oh, this also runs my 12 volt ceiling fan too. So this is ran by solar. I have one 100 watt solar panel up on the roof and then I have, which is connected to the EcoFlow and then I have my Jackery connected to the EcoFlow. So the sun charges the EcoFlow and the EcoFlow charges the Jackery. So over here, these big, beautiful, picturesque windows here. This is what kind of sold me on the tool shed when I purchased it. And I thought, oh, this would make a great tiny house and what amazing views you could have in it. The guy who I bought it from, he had put these in here and what they are, are glass lighting doors. And um, I just love that idea. I love, of use, love the idea of using reclaimed materials and stuff like that. And since it is such a small space, having bigger windows in here, I thought it was an amazing idea. That way it doesn't feel so cramped and claustrophobic in here. And then um, this window right here, I actually purchased from an antique store in Boca Grande. It's an old uh, late 1800s window that comes from an old house out on Boca Grande that got tore down and somebody salvaged this and I have a little history with Boca Grande because I have a floating tiny house out there and I wanted to bring a little bit of that history here and incorporate it into this tiny house. So as far as the walls are, um, everything, the walls, the exterior wall, the exterior walls were here 
And then um, I put in all the insulation. I did all the electrical, which I haven't used yet. Um, and then these are just old rustic pallet wood. I got a bunch of pallet and I just started, just started going at it. Um, this up here is, it's called beadboard, but it's not like, you know, it's the generic beadboard. It's like one whole panel. And then I just took pallets and I cut them in half so I could create the border and cover up all my, my messes around the edges. And let's see, these are some really cool, they're like Moroccan hanging lights. And I put some more of those puck lights in there as well. This is where none of the magic happens. This is a DIY, well, this whole thing has been a DIY project for me, but this one was kind of challenging for me. Um, it is a day bed during the day and at night you can convert it into a queen size bed. So for storage, which I have a ton of storage under here, especially if I have it pulled out into a queen size bed, this is kind of like my garage area, so to speak. Under here is where I keep the other two cushions for when the bed gets pulled out. And um, on this side, in the back, I have my dirty clothes and some other blankets and stuff like that. And then this is my dog's area here where his bed and food and uh, water and food bowl is. I retired at the end of the year this year, or the end of 2021. Um, I used to own a cleaning and staging business and um, my daughter has flown the coop and she is on her own now. So it was just me in this big old house. And I said, it's finally time for me to start fulfilling my dreams. And um, so yeah, right now I'm just living my best life. I'm not doing much of anything right now besides you know, working on this tiny house and getting it finished um, because when I'm done, I am turning this into an Airbnb and, um, and then I will go live in my short bus. So welcome outside. And this is my front porch, which I just made out of some really big pallets that I found. These pallets are actually made out of like huge two by fours. So I had two of these and I put this one down as the deck and then I took the other one and cut it up and I created the steps here to go up into the tiny house. Um, the, there's another one over there, it's a little different, um, but I just kind of threw that there for my dog to lay on and put some extra plants on. These are some really cool woven baskets that I found at a thrift store, of course, that I just hung up here. This right here, I did myself. Um, this is all just a bunch of uh, wooden shims and I just kind of broke them all into different sizes and glued them up here and created this, this cool looking door piece. Um, the outside of course is all made out of pallet wood again and I just did the same technique as I did inside there and I uh, overlapped them so that when it rains, it'll drip off the side and not go down into the, into the cracks. This is just a video surveillance camera that I have out here. And I have that hooked up directly to the uh, EcoFlow inside there as well. And it goes directly to my phone, to the app, so I can see if anybody comes out here and it alerts me when I'm not here, just for extra protection. All right, and this is the generator that runs the AC unit. It's a Predator 2000 and, um, it runs, like I said before, it'll run the AC unit on one take of gas for anywhere from 10 to 12 hours. And it's really simple. And welcome to my outdoor shower. Um, for the sides, I just bought some reed fencing. And this is a Camp Lux Outdoor Life Pro Series. Um, this is how I take a heated shower. So this connects down to the propane tank. And then this side over here, I put directly into um, my fresh water tank. So you have your inlet and your outlet, one coming from the, the tank here, going down to the, the pump and then into the water system. And then over here is this little button, which would just turn on and I have hot shower. So here is this really cool fire pit that I built. 
And I got these logs from somebody who was throwing them away from a tree they cut down. So you could sit on it and enjoy the fire. This is a really cool cooktop over open flame grill that I bought. Um, you can just turn this little thing here and get it down closer to the fire if you need it or vice versa and have it up higher. I've cooked a couple meals on it so far and it's, it's fun. Over here, I have my, my hammock. And uh, I just bought these two poles and put them in the ground. And I didn't do it very well the first time, but uh, so that's why I have this brace up here because when I, when I sit on it, the top bowed because I didn't do it deep enough. But so I put this, this topper up here and now it works great. And I love to come out here in the evening and enjoy the sunset. So welcome to my secret garden. Um, I just planted some of these probably about two weeks ago. So nothing's really grown that much yet. And uh, here are just some stepping stones some that I found and I put in here. And over here I have, I planted corn, which is starting to grow really nicely. Green beans, tomatoes, carrots. I have an avocado tree, spinach, onions, sage, basil and some watermelon which is also growing really well right now. So if you're interested in staying in this awesome micro tiny house you can contact me on my YouTube at Florida Chicks Tiny Adventures and um, we can get you set up with the Airbnb link. Also, if you wanna see how I built this from start to finish and check out my floating tiny house and my bus, um, you can also check all that out on my playlist, uh, my YouTube Florida Chick Tiny Adventures. Thank you for coming along with me and checking out my tiny house. <laughs>